My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And welcome in Judd's Hockey Show, which means Judd Zolga, Declan Goff. Uh, first one we've done in a while because, quite frankly, we've been just sitting back, waiting for some news, waiting for something to talk about, waiting for something exciting. And, something. of course, and of course, the big story uh, in recent weeks and pretty much the last month plus had been the fact that Kirill Kaprizov was back in Russia and then a report surfaced. Um, last month, a legend Kaprizov had purchased fraudulent military identification in Russia. Um, those allegations largely refuted, but we do know uh, via Michael Russo of The Athletic that Kaprizov did make a couple attempts to get back uh, to the U.S., uh, was denied. Now, that has more to do with his documentation than him being in trouble, but he right. went back to Russia then. So you're like, okay, when's he coming back here? Well, R- Russo reported this week that um, that uh, Kaprizov was expected or was back and was expected back in the Twin Cities on Tuesday. As far as we know, that has taken place. And so, Declan, a collective sigh of relief because of this. Oh. I'm glad it's done. Like, I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's fine. I, I hope his family is fine. Uh, th- there is certainly enough turmoil in his home country that that's not a good thing. Uh, but I have a feeling that we're going to find out someday that this story was not just some cut and dry misunderstanding. Oh, he was fine the entire, like I saw tweets about, yeah, oh yeah, he'll, he'll be back. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. These things ordinarily have a little bit more of a, a what's the term I'm looking for? Spy novel sort of thing to play out. Right. So uh, I, I would say this, no matter how it was orchestrated and worked, and, and I think he came back to the States through Turkey, um, Kirill Kaprizov being back here has to be a huge sigh of relief for Craig Leopold, Bill Guerin, Dean Evason, the Wild, and the Wild fan base. Yeah, uh, thank goodness, right? I mean, it was definitely something to monitor. It was not something to sweep under the rug. You know, it was kind of... Once, uh, once the first news broke, I think everyone's first reaction was, well, hold on, you know, let's let's let the cards kind of play out a little bit. This is Russia. Things are a little wackier over there than they are certainly in the United States. So let's wait till the facts start to come out. And then you heard more and more, and you heard about the other player that was detained. And then it was like, oh, boy, this actually <laughs> might be a th- – this actually could be a very classic Minnesota sports thing that we lose our superstar to a weird, arbitrary thing that's happening outside of our control and outside of the of the United States. So, yeah, g- good thing he's finally back here. And and good, just Krill stay here. It, th- there's there's plenty of great great things that Minnesota has to offer, you know, if you want the want the Russian factor, you know, go to Moscow on the hill for God. I'll join you for a couple cocktails. I'm going to probably put whiskey in it over vodka. I'm sorry. Uh but yeah, that's Don't. no problem either. Uh but yeah, but I'm glad he's back. That's all I care about. I'm just glad he's back here. Yeah, and hopefully things in his home country settle down between now and next year because his family's there. So like, that's the big thing. Correct. And look, look, I am all for him not going back, but it's, I, I think with a lot of national hockey league players from Russia, it's a very difficult ask to say, you know, don't go, don't go check on your family and friends. So that's the difficult thing here. I got a question for you now. Yes, um, sir. Not surprisingly, when because of their cap problems, this has been a pretty inactive Mm-hmm. Summer, spring, summer. Not a shock there. I'm seeing very, it feels like, very differing views on expectations, though. And and um, I feel like a lot of people, and by the way, they might not be wrong. This is my question. I feel like a lot of people are sort of dismissing the Wilds' chances. And look, I think it's going to be a little bit more of a struggle for sure. Right now, with training camp uh, set to start now next month, what is your expectation personally for what we're going to see in 2022-23? Well, I, I, it's you're going to have a step back. Um, you won't get 113 points again. Um, and it's more of trying to figure out where those law of averages balance each other out. Is Ryan Hartman legitimately a 35-goal scorer? I like to say no. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he does turn it. And by the way, a guy who scores 25 to 30 goals is still going to be a productive player. I just think there's probably regression to his game. You know, Zuccarello's up there in age, and you'd like to think from the age standpoint that, all right, something's going to have to give with his game, but he's playing with Kirill. So I really can't really suggest that he's going to regress to a degree. Um, and then you look at guys like, you know, the goaltending situation with, with Fleury, um, and now Talbot's gone. Does the goaltending 
kind of rise up a little bit. You know, it kind of by the it was so rocky and roller coaster and in and, and the classic goaltending fashion that it was hard to really ride the consistency train with them. I think once they estab- once they acquired Flurry, things got a lot better and it was much more sta- stable with him and Talbot basically rotating in the regular season. Uh, but does the goaltending also rise up and play a little bit better? You know, they lost Kevin Fiala, so you're not going to solely replace his production individually with another player, but do guys like Matt Boldy, et cetera, kind of take the burden of that? Is Marco Rossi truly ready? I, I still look at it as a team that could be a top three team in their division, probably should still be in the playoff bubble. I don't think they're a lock to be, you know, number two in their division like they were last season, but I, I do expect them to still probably compete for a playoff spot with Kirill now back here. And look, I don't know what other big moves could happen for this team outside of a trade for the most part. They have have next to minimal cap space left, but there are still some decent free agents out there, which is also kind of wacky. So uh, I wonder if as as time goes on, you know, does Bill Guerin convince another free agent, hey, you're still unsigned. I know you need a job here. You know, I, I kind of look at someone like Paul Stastny of like, if, if he remains unsigned, and a guy who's been around the block a few times, and it seems like a Garen guy, right? Like a dude that's just playoff tested. He's yeah. played a bajillion playoff teams, played for a bunch of teams. If he remains unsigned, is that someone that comes in kind of last second towards the end of free agency or maybe the beginning of training camp? Curious on that. But I, I, my expectation is they still should be a playoff team, but there'll probably be some type of regression that happens. I guess my question is this too, uh, because you are correct. There are definitely some players, veteran players left, who you could pick off the pile and would probably contribute. My question, and this we will only find out through time, is does the Wild want to do that? Or is their plan to not take up a roster spot of a young player? Um, And and I get, you know, I I mean, you won't completely know with some of the young talent if if they are prepared to play until training camp. But Mm -hmm. that being said, I think what makes this, season so interesting to me is some of the question marks and and like some of the things that only as time plays out will we know but you know what perfect one is this Marco Rossi if Marco Rossi can step in and play well uh it's a definite game changer because if he steps in and plays well and look this could be a long shot I don't know but if he steps in and and even comes close to starting to maximize his potential, he's going to quickly probably become a better center than you had last season on your team. And that's all due respect to Eck. But, you know, Eck is Eck. Like, like he does what he does incredibly well. But he is certainly not a guy where where you now, I I think, look and say, well, you know what? He should be uh, centering... Kaprizov. Now we said that at one point, but we saw it and it didn't really work. And I mean, he is, he is so good uh, Dex on that Greenway Felino line. So that's where I think this, this season, not just for us, but for probably Everson and Garen as well, holds so much intrigue because when you look at that roster and you look at who's coming up and you look at the potential of, let's just say a couple of guys start to really shine and come through not saying it makes them great but it certainly sets you up for a quicker launch with this group than you probably are thinking right now yeah and and, you know those are questions that bill garen has to kind of figure out here look they have the best prospect pool in the nhl i'd be most pools have them at number one going into this season um mark headlined by marco rossi's game um and great that's that's awesome you know I, i hope rossi steps in and is their next stud and obviously they need you know, cost productive players under low cap hits over the next basically three to four years with the Prize Suter buyouts really hampering their salary cap. So they have to get creative with their rookie contracts. Then they also have to figure out if they bring in a free agent. You know, I I know I um, brought up Paul Stastny, but what about Evan Rodriguez, a guy from the Penguins who has also been very solid, a good two-way guy, who's a bottom six dude who remains a free agent. You know, Garen's familiar with the Penguins organization for How whatever he reason. He's kind there? of obsession. I don't know. He's good. Um, he is he's good. coming off a really good year. Yeah, like he. he, he that's amazing. Yeah, he's a, he's a really solid, solid player. Stasny makes sense, right? Because he's older yeah. and, and he's been around a long time. But as I recall in, in watching Penguins games last season, Evan Rodriguez was really solid. 
yeah, I, I thought he was a, a really solid player, too. So I, that, that's another guy I like to keep an eye on. I think as training camp gets closer and if guys are still out there and Garen figures feels that, you know, I don't know if Rossi's ready for this yet. Let me bring in someone. I can see that happening. You know, I'm excited for those prospects, too, but I think sometimes fans, especially the diehards, get really obsessed with the prospect rankings and the prospect pool. And even though they had the number one prospect pool in the NHL, odds are probably only two of them at most, maybe three, turn out to hit their actual ceilings. So right. that that's where you kind of have to take the prospect pools with a grain of salt. It's a good thing that the Wild had that with their cost uh, being hampered by buyouts, but I also wouldn't rule out someone being signed in probably more last minute than it would be um, than, than in the near future. Last thing, and I'm seeing this already, and look, I am as, and I, I think both of us, uh, at our very different ages and stages in life, are as big a, of Minnesota sports pessimists as you can get. Like, sure. we've seen a lot of things, and it's been bad yeah. a lot of times, and blah, blah, blah. Um, can we please, though, and, like, I, I, I'm i not joking here. Can we stop with the Kaprizov's going to be gone as soon as this contract is done? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I've seen that on Twitter, and look, I know, it's small sample size, okay? I get it. I get it. The majority of you are not saying that, and I appreciate that. But where the hell is this coming from? I think his contract's got, like, what, four years left, X? Three, four, yeah. three or four, four. years? Like, yeah, what? Years why are we – like, there is a lot of Minnesota <laughs> sports stuff to worry about. So I am not telling you to, oh, you you should be optimistic about Minnesota sports, okay? There's a lot of things. Totally get that. Um, and I don't disagree with that. But the Kaprizov thing, we have no idea. He has never given any indication that he doesn't like it here. Um, he clearly signed knowing exactly, and just as importantly, I'm sure it's explained to him by his representation, right? What the, what the circumstances were with the salary cap, with the potential that, and look, a guy like that, right or wrong thinks, and he, he's probably right. He can help you win games by himself. Um, so can we just please stop with this? Oh, it's, uh, you know, the wild's going to come out of the cap hell and then Kaprizov's going to leave. Um, one, I have no idea why we're talking about that now or thinking about it. And two, like if this guy had Hollywood stars in his eyes, right? Or he was going to Broadway, like he talked about New York constantly. I'd be like, oh, okay, I sort of get this. Uh, but unless you disagree or have seen something, Declan, I have seen absolutely positively nothing that would generate a conversation about what's going to happen to Kirill Kaprizov in three or four years. Yeah, this, this, we're getting a little ahead of our skis in that one. Um, yeah, you know, he I, I would probably put the odds on that he probably will move when the contract is up, probably. But also, it's four years from now. I, I, For God's sakes, I, a lot of life can happen in four years, okay? I look at myself four years ago to right now, and I know a lot has happened. So I, I wouldn't be completely freaked out that Kirill Kaprizov is going to up and, up and leave. And, and if you're putting a lot of turmoil there, then that's an issue. I think you should be more concerned with him being stuck in Russia. That should have been point, point A number one. Oh, yeah. Point two he should be is if he does suffer an injury, this team's going to be just terrible. And then point three is if your goaltending is not fixed, this team's also going to be bad. I just listed three things that you know yeah. you could actually be worried about instead of worrying about something that's yeah. going to happen in 2026. Don't go down that road yet. Point two, though, is if he gets hurt and they're terrible, you get a great draft pick. See, that's, that's the true. thing is I, like, I, I am being – as honest I, as I could possibly be, be. And I am not calling for tanking one bit, Declan. But the path this franchise is taking now makes me very happy. Um, it's certainly not perfect, but guess what? Things aren't perfect. But when you look at this, right? You brought this up yourself. When your farm system now, which by the way, with Chuck Fletcher's GM was barren. It was a mess. When your feeder system, when your prospects are as plentiful as this team has now. Um, and that's the thing about, about Kaprizov to keep in mind. He is not, Bill Guerin is not going to stick this kid with a bunch of 36-year-old year um, AHL slappies and, and be like, yeah, the, this is what we're stuck with. Like, we should see these kids start to progress, right? Like, that's the future. Um, the other thing... I would say, and I know that Russians have often left. They don't always leave, but they do leave at times, okay? Uh, but Panarin left Columbus, so let's not let's not equate, and Columbus is great, I'm sure, but let's not equate that to, to here. But, you know, keep in mind, Sidney Crosby stayed in Pittsburgh. If you can build something, and I think that Garen's on the right path. I really do. It might not work, 
But I think he's on the right path. If you can build something that Kirill Kaprizov sees that he can be the foundational star to, and this is going to be a good thing. This is going to be a good team. And by the way, at some point in time, he will be the captain. All due respect, Jared Spurgeon. Uh, your hard work and having fun is important. But he will be this captain or the captain of this team. Um, I don't look at this and see, oh, they're going to be terrible for a long time. I look at this and see there's going to be some bumps. And I look at this and see that uh, that there are certainly going to be challenges. But if this goes as planned, knock on wood, I think this sets up really well in four years. Exactly. incredibly well so yeah, I'm, that, I'm just not that down on on this whole thing yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't get too freaked out about something that's happening in four years a lot can happen and change and how this team looks in four years can be completely different so don't worry about it it'll be fine all right we are uh done back soon i'm sure if there is more, more news as i said before too we're gonna um certainly start to do a lot more shows once training camp fires up in mm-hmm. september but for now declan take it away uh, hit the subscribe button, Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment, Judd's Hockey Show. Yes, we'll be back when uh, when news is breaking, training camp coming up. So we'll be uh, we'll be ready for that, Bill. Gar- you know, there's no room for petty bull. Thanks, Bill. <laughs>